again. Hello. Yeah, perfect. Hello, my liver. Right. <laughs> We're not in the kitchen. We're outside. You can probably hear a crackling fire. Mm. It's nearly Christmas, and we've brought you here to the fireside. <laughs> sing your little song. <laughs> so no, I really backed, my, backed myself into Go the corner there. Jingle bell, jingle. Oh, I was going for like more of a James Dean, slightly like two glasses of whiskey and like. <laughs> you can't really hear the words, but you know. Christmas. It's the type of Wait. music. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's the type of music that makes me think that, like, obviously everyone listens to it because it's of, you know, it's Christmas music. It's the Christmas playlist. Right? But when you listen to it, you're a hundred percent sure that, like, when they was recording it, he was also leering at some woman <laughs> in the room. <laughs> Just like you need a bit. I can't do yeah. it on a podcast, but like a little bit of an eye and a lean and a. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, it's just a little bit the same Creepy. with um, um, baby it's cold outside that is yeah, the most Santa baby is song. like I can't leave the house don't worry or oh my yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. running away like yeah. it's real <laughs> you've spiked my drink she literally is like say what's in this drink and he's like don't worry about it yeah it's so cold and um, do you know <laughs> um, the Louis Armstrong one mm. and it's something that like, I could be completely wrong not backdoor this. Santa I yeah, there is a song called Backdoor Santa. No, no. I'm a Backdoor Santa. In, Santa. in yeah. the Louis Armstrong one, mm. he's uh, his like bit is like drink some Swiss Miss or Swiss Miss or whatever, and it's like a laxative that what? sponsored him or something. I could be this could be out of my ass, but mm. there, anyway, um, it's not a Christmas podcast because it's actually not December yet. No, we've but just you're very keen. Gone slightly insane, and I've embraced it. I can't fight it, so I'm going to run with it. Well, we were talking about, weren't we, that like Christmas is like, the actual day of Christmas is not as exciting as the lead up to Christmas. Mm. And the purpose of the lead up to Christmas or winter festival or all the other Christmassy, wintery festival things is, is like, hey, guess what? It's dark and cold. You mm. need something to like mentally keep you going. Yep. I mean, the only thing that would make it more obvious was if you had like an advent calendar of vitamin d mm. tablet so it was like every morning you open it up you get a little there's no sunshine so just have a little bit of vitamin d make you happier but we don't do that we go like hey i'm just gonna have a little bit of sugar and chocolate and be a little bit happy for five minutes and then be yeah. that's my that's your winter yeah i'm not fun at christmas <laughs> <laughs> i sit around just telling everyone the sun's gone yeah um right Enough what are we talking about? Fucking <clears throat> waffle. Um, we are talking about... Uh, what was the official... I wrote it really well. Resilience. Pers resilience. Perseverance. Perseverance. And hitting the zone of proximal development. Now, that just sounds so exciting, doesn't it? When it really does. When you say it like that, you think, this is a podcast I really want to Hey, guys, to. I come here for the jokes. <laughs> and the... Uh, 40 year old oh educational God. theories. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> way older than 40 year old. When's Vygotsky? Oh my god, I just, uh, hang on, I think it's 30s, I'm going to go with 1930s, but I'm going to check that, check that fact. Well, yeah, people come here for... Yes, mate, 32, 19, 1930... What, that's when he was born? No man, he developed it in the last three years of his life and he died in 1934. God, it feels like he was scribbling that out at the... Squeaking that out at the last minute yeah. to be like, I've got this really important idea. Yeah, he didn't fully develop it, he just put it out there. I mean, isn't that fully developed by that's other people? Exactly afterwards. what we've done with this podcast. We've yeah. in no way perfected it. No. We just put it out. Yeah, just anyway, so zone knowledge. of proximal development for people. Let's do some stuff for people that might have come to this podcast or come to Forest School without doing the dry academic teacher training. Teacher training. Um, so the zone of proximal development is the idea that the most effective learning takes place. Um, in this little narrow band. And if you think about um, uh, difficulty in sort of like, like a bar chart going up and it's kind of like too easy for, for say 60% of the activities yeah. can be. And then, <clears throat> but, so that is not challenging. It's not stimulating. Or you could just say, you could view it in another way as like a circle instead of rather, Ooh, instead of this. like negative, um, too easy, you can just view it as like a circle in the middle of the circle. It's like, Stuff that a child, we're going to talk about in context of children, uh, stuff a child can do by mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. They can just do it. 
um, and a bit like you said the other day about something that they can do is something they can do even if they're ill, a bit ill, and oh, they yeah. can still just pick it up and do it. Like they can, yeah. they, it's in their repertoire. Yeah, yeah. Like can an eleven-year-old recite the alphabet? Yeah. Right? They could come in with the flu, and you're like, some could. Okay, <laughs> a lot of eleven-year-olds. Can you walk? You can walk even if you're feeling you've got a bit of a cold and no one's really helping you or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff you can do. And then um, then there's a band around that circle, the bigger circle. Are you going um, out now? So yes, it's a, bigger going, circle. a bigger circle. And in oh, that bigger circle is stuff that uh, a child can do with some kind of assistance and support, whether that be um, uh, you know, support from a knowledgeable other. So that could right. be a peer. a peer, it could be a, a parent, a teacher. A and it could also thing. be a, a not a person. So it could be like, this is achievable. No, I think it's got to be a person. Does I think it? the theory is that you, oh. that you watch and learn from the knowledgeable other. Oh, okay. And then no, right. out, and then there's another bigger circle yeah. of uh, stuff that they just can't do, even with assistance. Um, it's just like out of that realm right now. Yeah. And so the idea is that, as you're saying, the learning happens in that middle band of stuff that a child can do with some kind of support and assistance from a knowledgeable other. And the more learning that, the more they're given those opportunities, mm -hmm. the more the bigger the circle it in grows. the middle gets. So, oh, okay. So it's yeah, like, yeah. well, I've just added that on, but you know, I like it as it a metaphor. Get, it would get bigger. Yeah, it? yeah. Because you're, you're like, oh, I can do that stuff. But the other ones do. The other ones move out mm. to to fit that. You know, there's yeah. always a zone of proximal development. Yeah. So the um, zone of proximal development is that middle circle of. Um, stuff that's just kind of stretching your can-do um, and I think that's where well. I prefer the like maybe this is like a, a, a hangover from so I think state education here it, it views education very linearly mm -hmm. rather than I think a circle is a nicer nicer object but um, the thinking uh, in my head it's, it's a linear like you're moving along the line and it goes too easy too easy too easy perfect for learning too yeah. hard, too hard, too hard. Yeah. And you move along that line and you sort of, the stuff moves into the, you know, it, it's moving left into that. Now yeah. it's now it's too easy. Yeah. Um, and I think the overarching thing that I would say, um, and which is what's kind of led me to doing forest school and to doing play, play working and to being there, is that I firmly believe that part of why child-led education works is because... The ZPD is exactly where play sits mm -hmm. for all children, <clears throat> um, and that you could, you know, I say this sometimes to pet to. Pet, I said this to my own mum who came to my own mother who mm. came to um, have a look round. She lives a couple of hours away, so she came and had a look round the session. She was going, well, how do they? She asked me how they learnt history, and I was like, mum, you, I'm really worried that that's what you think <laughs> I do, or that you thought that I thought this was what they were doing. You know, she was yeah. watching kids like climbing trees, lighting fires, and she's like, well, well, how did they learn this? Anyway, mm. um, and I said, well, you can be a teacher and you can work really hard to try and pitch a lesson at a like, oh, I think that will be just about difficult enough, mm. and then you add into a layer onto that that's like. The differentiation that you that you need to do to go right. Well, for Gemma, that will well, be kind yeah, of exactly. challenging. Yeah. And Lewis is a bit slow, so he's going to need like crayons and <laughs> and, and you know and doing that. And you're trying to do that for like thirty kids five yeah. times a week, uh, yeah. five lessons a week, uh, five lessons a day. And then you multiply that into like well, I need a starter that's differentiated, and I need a main that's differentiated, yeah. and a plenum that's differentiated. Or you look at it in terms of play. If something's too easy, you stop playing it because mm. it's not fun. You just Some, change it and adapt it. Yeah. And, yeah if yeah. something's too hard, you don't play it. Mm. You know. If something is challenging, mm. that's exactly where children want to play. So mm. I feel like you can do a lot of work putting this like lesson plan and perfect thing in, and then it's a little bit colder than you thought, or someone didn't have breakfast right, and your plan is now useless. Mm. Yeah. Or not useless. Your plan is now not effect as effective as it could be. But if you come in and you go, right, let me let's see what do you want to play today? Where are you today? Mm. Just show me. Because yeah. they'll go and play stuff yeah, that is like, they'll go, right. It's almost like they're holding up a big sign saying, this mm. is challenging for me. This yeah. is kind of hard. And you yeah. go, perfect. Yeah. Now let's step in yeah. and let's work with you. Yeah. And go, if that's kind of hard, let's, let's get that until mm. it moves into your inner circle or into your yeah. whatever the, the thing is. Yeah. Um, and I think... I've, I've been talking for a very long time now, um, but <laughs> I, do you want me to talk? Do you want me to talk now? Well, yeah, it's go my on turn then. to talk. Yeah, um, you can have the stick. <laughs> I was just thinking about whether it's 
true that all play happens in the ZPD because I was also thinking about Ooh. it in terms of adults because sometimes you are in a place where you do just want to sit in that comfortable place you do just want to do the things that you can do without any stretch or challenge right now um, and I think kids do that as well as adults you know an example might be that you are doodling or coloring in that kind of meditative just I am playing because I'm there mm -hmm. just coloring or doodling and I doodle the same doodles now that I've doodled since I was about 13 and I know because I've got my diaries from then right. and my hand naturally makes the same shapes when I'm doodling and I do this kind of weird like spiral thing get and into I that still flow state naturally do that but flow state needs a certain <clears throat> amount of challenge and yeah. I would say I'm going to talk again I'm going to steamroll all over you um, well you know because I'm a man and therefore more important um, that's not <laughs> get out um <laughs> Of the I think that is. Can I can I just, can I just finish my thought? Uh, I suppose. So, so that I uh, yeah I can't now because you've talked about flow. Okay. Well, I think that is. I think you are still um, playing in your ZPD. I just think the ZPD is not a fixed place. So, like we were saying about. Um, can they come in and do it when they've got the flu? Can they walk? Mm. Yes. Yeah. But I think there's a much more subtle level to that, which is like, um, what is challenging for you when, if we're talking about children, mm. on the day when they've had a good breakfast, they've had a perfect night's sleep, mm. um, yeah, they, yeah, they've yeah, arrived with no issues, but then, and then <clears> that's <throat> very different to, I didn't sleep well, last well because yeah. my baby brother was crying and, you know, there wasn't milk so I've had to have dry toast and that's not ideal. Mm. And so, that's where the ZPD shifts. And like, I think when we're, uh, when we're doing things like doodling or um, monging out with a TV show that you've already watched and you're, been, mm. you know, you're just going, oh, I've seen Future Armour already, I'm just mm. gonna watch it again. Um, you are still working in that ZPD, but you are self-differentiating for like, actually, what's challenging for me? What's the, the enjoyable <laughs> level of challenge right now? Yeah, I guess so. Is because, a very yeah, yeah, because I guess the zero challenge would be doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. So either I'm... I, it, this is some time in which I am free to do as I choose. Yeah. Um, I can either sit there literally doing nothing or I can give myself a little bit of challenge by doodling and seeing what shapes I can make. Yeah, okay, I get that. Um, I've heard a very... Uh, uh, now, this is kind of rude. Oh! I've heard... Uh, I think, actually, it was in uh, Neil I. Chixit Nahai's books on flow. No, it can't be. He wouldn't have been this rude. Um, the brain is an organ, mm -hmm. and like all organs, mm. you get more fun when you play with it. Right, yes. You know? Yeah. yeah and, that, and that idea that, like, actually not using our brains isn't fun. Mm -hmm. You don't get any dopamine yeah, hits yeah, out yeah. of it. And, yeah. and in, in the same way of like uh, sometimes running two miles is hard and sometimes getting up and, and walking around the village is, you know, you, you, we adapt that level of challenge. It's not always running two miles is always exactly the same level of difficulty to me. Mm. You, you adapt and you, you have different things. And when you're doodling, like if we can just go down that rabbit hole with doodling, um, you, it's self-imposed, so you're deciding how neat that doodle has to be, mm. or how, you know, how focused you have to be with it. You could do like a real sloppy, yeah. whatever. You'd still be doodling, and some days that might be as difficult as you want to make it. You know, mm. you're actually you're on quite an intense phone call, mm. and you're just scribbling and cross hatching. Sometimes I cross hatch and just do mm. darker and darker things, and it looks like I've got real emotional problems because <laughs> the page just gets darker and yeah. darker as I carve it through and the whole. Rip the um, paper. Yes, and then you start on the next page. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, yourself, you're, you're self mediating where your ZPD is. Mm. Yeah. Um, and. I think then that this flows into, if we're talking about how does this uh, come into our practice, is one, uh, as I think I touched on, is being so really flexible with your planning mm. and being really like, um, uh, you know, I say it quite a lot, but meeting them where they are, yeah. not meeting them where they were, not meeting them where you think they should be, arriving and almost having a like non-verbal conversation of where are you right now, yeah. where are you today? Um, and I think that's where, again, state schooling has this thing of like, well, we did that yesterday, so now we're going to do yesterday plus one, and then we'll do yesterday plus two. Yeah. And, you, and, the, and there's, there's very little time 
to to keep going. Oh, okay. Where are you? Where? Let's let's. Oh, actually, there's, you've there's jumped. No you've trust, jumped ahead. Loads. There's no trust in the child or the teacher at the moment in the state system. I don't think because you're not you're not trusting that the child is going to. Sorry, I'm just pausing because. I've got. I'm getting more and more green ink on my hands. Your hands, hands are going green. Have I got a green face? Huh? <laughs> a little bit on your nose and both of your nostrils. This is ink. It's You've not, gone green. And something about my person is leaking oh, green ink. Oh, it's plague. I, yeah, <laughs> you've got it's plague. It's forest plague. I've literally green fingers. Um. Uh. Yeah. So that trust. That Why are you rubbing your hands? You just rubbed your hands on your nose and your forehead. You're gonna look like Shrek before we're finished. Oh my gosh. Stop rubbing your face. It's it's because it's on there and I need to get it off. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so the There's trust no trust. the trust in the child that they will want to learn, like you're saying about the brain being occupied when you're using it, it's like mm -hmm. at the moment that whole thing of like, well, unless you really push these children, they're just gonna get like complacent. mentally mentally complacent, overweight, flabby, unfit, like not even proper citizens of the world. Oh, because, like they're not like that already. No, I'm joking. Uh, you know, unless you do something to them, you yeah. know, they're going to do that. And how can, how, you know, sh show us that you're challenging Humans are them. an incredible species in that, like, pl we play to learn and we have done for, what's the human species, 10,000, you know, 100,000 years. As a, That's how we have adapted. That's why we have dominated the planet is because we play and we learn through play and we adapt and we do all this stuff. And then last 200 years... If you're just coming off of, sorry, if you're just listening to the last one where we're breaking down schools and why they don't teach, you're well on board with me now. But going like, you know, this, I, yeah, like you say, this idea of if you don't push it into people, yeah, they'll have no motivation to and learn. And also no trust in, um, in teachers. So if you, um, we sort of take a curriculum for granted now, but mm -hmm. the national curriculum in Britain has only been around since the 80s. And before that, teachers were more free to, do, to teach what the heck they wanted. And so yeah. then you could be more child-led in your um approach and there was trust in you as a professional to do that and to adapt like you're saying you know oh i've planned this because they were interested in that yesterday oh they're not interested in it today i'm going to change this actually oh you've just said something that's made me go off down a rabbit hole and yeah let's explore that right now whereas uh, but, but i think that's that's there I isn't i think they're, they're they're parallel topics but they're but they're slightly different things because one one part of it is interest and following children's interest and going that's the zpd that is challenging and interesting and the other bit is that you could stay on exactly the same track on exactly the same topic, but move backwards and forwards and be flexible about like, okay, we talked to you yesterday about, um, cause you were interested in Henry the eighth and, and we talked about his six wives yesterday. Um, and then you, you go, you do your starter and you, or you, you know, meet the children again and you realize that that didn't go in and being absolutely able to go, right, actually, we're basically going to do yesterday again, or we might even go further back than that. So in the same topic and area, being able to go, oh, I think I think if you're a teacher going, oh, I think I misjudged the ZPD yesterday um, or today, and you know I'm going to need to move this backwards and forwards to make it more more challenging, less challenging, and and also coming in and going, which is obviously I think happens more times than people will acknowledge, is you arrive and you go. Oh my god! You can already do everything that was on mm. that I thought we mm. were going to do. You have just done it in five minutes. Yeah, That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Um, and and not going like, well, don't go too fast. Yeah. Right. Don't, I got you've got to slow the slow the bright ones down a little bit yeah. so that you can make move sure you underline the date. Oh, fuck <laughs> off. Just, you can't do the extension until you've done everything perfectly. Yeah. So that is the the kind of crux of it, and then applying that to practice here. In, in the woods, Raven shush Mr. Again. Raven, <clears throat> um, is kind of, so like I say, it is all child-led, you know, and, and that varies from group to group, doesn't it? Sometimes that's child-led in the moment, mm. and we're arriving into doing this, and sometimes you're looking at it over half a term and going, you know, I've known you for two years now, mm -hmm. so I might have more of an idea, but still being able to move that and shift where it is, and um, it kind of, uh, it, I go back in my mind quite a lot to a conversation we had before um, where it was this idea of like do you let children fail yes you yeah. know and, and and the level of perseverance and and I, I feel like it's a sometimes I feel like it's like hiding the fact that you got the ZPD wrong if you arrive with a topic that um, that children then can't achieve 
you know, or, or, or an activity that you know they, they, they can't achieve, and rather than going, oh right, this is the wrong activity for you right now, let's scale it to whatever. You go, yeah, but if I give you eight crutches and I do the first bit for you, and then I layer that on top, mm. oh, you've achieved mm. it. You go, well, you, you didn't achieve it. Mm. You know, you've you've kind of like. But if you're always giving them uh, things that they can't do. Then also they're just going to get needs cheesed reflection. off, and that, you, yeah. you know, and they won't engage, and they'll automatically assume they can't do anything because mm-hmm. they can never do anything that you show them. Yeah, but I think there's a difference between um, uh, if I think about something, maybe like whittling. Like, you know, you know, you're doing. A, let's say make, taking a, making a spoon mm-hmm. and going. Um, oh, you saw the wood. You draw the spoon on it, carve it down, and then you make it thing. You know, do whatever. Um, and sometimes the the right thing to do is to kind of go, oh, I've given you like a spoon blank. Yep. Can you now finish it? Or, you know, we've, we've drawn the spoon together. And you, you, there's always one way where you work backwards. So the children are doing more of the activity. The first bit is just, can you cut down the mallet? Mm-hmm. You know, cut with the bill hook or whatever. And then you go, oh, can you saw the log? And then cut down the mallet. And, and then it becomes completely independent. You're still making the same outcome every time. Mm-hmm. Which I don't, my experience is that that progress of learning isn't as um, impactful as, as kind of going the other way, where the end product is different mm-hmm. each time because you've made a greater thing. Always arriving at the same place. It's almost like running a marathon, uh, not running, you know, if you, if you think of the finish spoon as the finish line of the race, and you first you start off 100 metres away from the finish line, and you run to the finish line. And then you start off 200 metres away from it, and you're still running to the same finish line. Mm. And you're 300 metres away, and you're running to the same finish line. I don't know any child that would choose to do any of this. <laughs> okay, but what I mean is it's a very different thing to starting at the same point every time yeah. with, like, a lump of wood. Yeah. And the first time, you're just splitting kindling, yeah. which is, like, running forwards 100 metres. Yeah. And then you're making, uh, you know, a feather stick, which is, like, another, you yeah. know, you're running further. So I think arriving that's what i mean about like putting crutches on mm. because you're you're not moving the finish line you're not changing the goal and children are it's a lot more difficult for them to reflect back and go oh yeah but last time i did it you helped me with that mm. and you didn't help me today that i'm not saying it doesn't happen but it's a harder thing than yeah hey look i made a different thing today that was yeah. harder that's yeah. a much bigger thing stop wobbling your face Found, I found the source of the green ink. It was the Forest School Leaders backpack where you ram the most random things next to each other, including, obviously for me, a hairband and a green felt tip without a lid on, I think is what's happened. So my hairband's got covered in green ink and then I've been playing with the hairband. Now I've got, I've got green hands and a green face. I've got a green face. It's going green. It's going green. You look a bit ill. Um, yes um, do you want to talk about the whole I don't know if we've talked about this before about kind of climbing and yeah, physically challenging things let's in the woods that. so we've got like an, we've got various like obstacle courses and um, kind of wonky climbing frames that have been cobbled together out of bits of pallets and wood and stuff and a tree house a couple of tree houses um, with different routes in and out and we have conversations with parents a lot about whether or not you assist a child with climbing um, up into something high or whether you just go well if they can't do it themselves right now then actually that is not something that they can do I, I, just to, I mean that's, that sounds on the face of it that sounds quite um, Harsh. defeatist maybe mm-hmm. that you arrive at it and uh, you know you go what they can't do it we're going home. No more forest school to you, bigger. Um, but actually, I think what we're talking about is is a lot more of like almost hands off guidance. So I would say there's a big difference between moving a child's foot with your hand and standing next to them and saying, "Can you put your foot on that step? Can you can you move your right hand up to that thing?" Um, and I would say the latter, doing giving verbal, you know, kind of tips and and that kind of thing confidence boosting so a lot of it is Is, you can tell a child is physically able um but they are going i can't do it just help me help me i can't do it i'm scared Mm. yeah i can see that you're scared and that's okay it's normal for us to feel scared um 
but if you know they can physically do it, mm. to give them that kind of emotional coaching. Go, I'm right. I'm right here. Mm -hmm. I'm right here. You know, and sometimes standing so -and -so. quite close, and I put my hands out yeah. so that I'm going. I'm I'm mitigating the risk for you. Yeah. Right. Like you're not going to fall because if you go backwards, you're going to go on to me. Yeah. Don't worry about that. So let's just focus on how are you going to climb up into that thing, or how and are you going to? Sometimes that's enough, and that yeah. and that works. Um, and sometimes that isn't that because that's that's the other difference, isn't it? Yes. It's about um, emotional uh, resilience and persistence rather than physical. So mm -hmm. some you know one child has given it a go, got really scared that it's too high, cried, had a meltdown, and then walked away from it. And then having had that experience the following week, they go that little bit further without the crying. And then three weeks later, they're just like. <laughs> and up they go and that's fine um which they wouldn't have experienced any of that progress if you had just helped them physically um or gone oh, okay you can't do it walk away as you say mm -hmm. you know we wouldn't go okay no it's not for you you can't do it yeah. um and so i guess that's a good example of something that isn't in the emotional <laughs> uh, zpd mm. at the beginning of the process that is way beyond does well, that's kind of, I think that led quite neatly into what I was, I was just going to say, which is that um, my understanding of the Vygotsky learning theory um, is that it's very much looking at academic learning or, or as you say, physical learning. Um, and it's quite interesting to apply it socially and so oh, goodness sake, socially and emotionally to what's socially and emotionally difficult for children mm -hmm. um, because uh, with a tree house uh, or, a, or an, acti you know, an activity that's on a table, if you're in a child-led setting, it's quite easy to walk away from, mm -hmm. to go, I've had a good, good old go at this and Gemma and Lewis stood next to me and they kind of coached me, but it, you know, you just get some children that go, nah, not today. My little boy has now uh, clocked onto the idea of when I bigger, when yeah. I bigger, can I do this? And I go, <coughs> maybe. And we've talked about, you know, that he'll be bigger next week, and but also he'll be bigger in a longer stretch of time. Um, so he's quite up for, oh, I can't do it now, maybe when I'm bigger. And you go, okay, cool. Um, but what I was going to say was, like, tree houses you can walk away from. Activities, unless you're in a school where they're sitting down and next to you and saying you must do the writing today, you can kind of get away from. Um, but emotional stuff is sometimes harder to step away from mm. if you're not ready for a very challenging situation like somebody shouting in your face because you have taken their thing yeah. right even or if a it, game that's very uh or someone disagrees about the rules or, mm. or, or or those kind of things they're much harder for children to put their hands up and go no nah, i'm mm. out because there's another player the treehouse doesn't follow you and mm. go oi you've yeah. got to climb me yeah. but another child will follow you and go no, we need to talk about these rules. Mm. We need to, you know, uh, we're, we're not going to carry on playing until you sort this out. Um, and that, I think, is something that practitioners need to be mindful of when they're dealing with kind of social and emotional situations is that sometimes the children just can't get out of them. There, yeah. there isn't an easy... And I think that's the insti that's the, that extinctive moment where you shift from going, okay, I'm adapting to the child, I'm adapting, I'm letting them lead, I'm mm -hmm. doing all that thing, and then you shift into, right, <laughs> yeah. distraction time, why are you doing this? Who wants to bake a cake now? Who wants mm -hmm. to, I'm going to do this if anyone wants to play. And then everyone, and you can almost hear the kind of little sighs of relief of those <sighs> people that are like, oh my gosh, thank you for saving me from that yeah. thing that I couldn't do and couldn't escape from. Yeah, um, but... But as we're saying about the, Z as the ZPD, and, and particularly we're thinking about perseverance, is when you, as a leader, start to see that situation arise again, is not immediately going, oh, little Jeffrey can't do, mm -hmm. can't handle it when the rules are changed, so I'm immediately going to step in. Yeah. You have to let them try the treehouse again. Yeah, you have to go, okay. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna them, fall off this bike watch again. Watch them flounder a little bit, which is hard. Definitely, it's hard really to hard. Yeah. But 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 and and you know they talk but you're about it. you've got to remember to frame it as a denial for them. That's what I find easier mm -hmm. to do. So it's really uncomfortable to watch somebody flounder. But if you don't, you are robbing them of an experience that's incredibly valuable for them. Not just in that moment. Not just about being able to use scissors or climb up a treehouse or sort out the argument with their friend. But long term, you know, yeah. you are building a person that is not capable. And so because they've never experienced yeah. that. It's learned helplessness, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's the same as 
Um, so learned helplessness can be, I th I, with all these things, I, I, I feel like the physical is a lot more easy to imagine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So learned helplessness is the child at the bottom of a climbing frame shouting, Daddy, you need to put me in the climbing frame. It's yeah. learned helplessness to, to not try. Yeah. To, you know, if they, if they try and then they're like, I can't do it, Daddy, mm. that's a different thing. But the children that arrive at a, a challenge and go, nope, mm -hmm. you need to help me. Um, but learned helplessness, social and emotionally, is, is the children that immediately come to an adult mm. with everything. Yep. With, and, and, and that is one of the things that I do think a lot of schools fostering children well, is a learned we've helplessness. We've had that discussion before, haven't we? About right. um, So th that's one of my favourite bits of It's Okay Not to Share, which we talk about all the time. But the chapter, I can't remember what it's called, but it was such a light bulb moment for me about um, uh, assisting children dealing with disagreements like that. Or, you know, they so-and-so, so-and-so push me. Yeah. Gemma, Lewis, they push me. Or they splashed the water and it went in my face. Whatever. And... Uh, so a, a traditional approach. It's a deep breath before when they come to that. You go. A traditional <laughs> approach might be okay. Right, I'm come, come, tell me, have a, don't throw water in her face. I shall ever. come in, kick the door down. Yeah, I yeah. shall solve this. Whereas the alternative theory is to go. Why, why are you telling me? You've got to, you've got to tell them. So giving the victim a voice is kind of how Heather Schumacher um, defines it. And again, once you put it like that, it becomes less about oh, I'm not helping them as a practitioner and the adult. I'm not helping them. That means you feel guilty. It's actually you are helping them. You're helping them more because you're giving them the skills to be able to deal with it when you're not there. That's mm -hmm. the other thing that you're not always going to be there for them. So to coach them through okay like the first few times it will be like okay, I'm coming with you. I'd like you know you need to tell him stop it little Billy Bob I don't like oh, it he's a real piece of work Billy, Billy Bob. Bob so um, Billy Bob stop throwing the water in my face I don't like it and then they literally kind of parrot it back and they go no look at now they'll sometimes say it to mm -hmm. you you know okay look at look at Billy Bob but that's the person you're speaking to and you do and it does work well I find and then with that there's a a, 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 a scale up of, of like first one is like I'll come and stand next to you mm. and I'll say it and the next one is like you tell me the sentence and I'll go over and say it so they practice saying it to you and then you go well let's check what we're going to say mm. and then we'll go together and we'll say it and then you know it's moving that ZPD of going what's difficult yep. what's what's achievable but challenging yep. and let's move that yeah. Slowly, slowly. Which was then monkey. a problem for my uh, five-year-old daughter, having been to our kindergarten and being kind of coached just in great. that system. Just being in the best place. <laughs> <laughs> but she and she definitely owned that skill. She couldn't do it, and then she could do it, and she and I saw her doing it all the time at home and at kindergarten. Um, and and the thing is that kids don't. Um, in my experience, anyway, if given go back to that, the, the example of Billy Bob scratching the water in the face mm -hmm. if you give that victim the, the skills to in a strong voice stand their ground and look the person in the face and go I stop it I don't like it Billy Bob doesn't go don't tell me to stop it and yeah, escalate yeah, yeah. the situation which you might imagine with an older with a teenager mm -hmm. or an adult mm -hmm. um, smaller children are kind of more used to, I guess to being told what to do or they're so sort of um, they just they just handle the truth they're like okay most of the and time it's, and it's the same uh, it's a similar um theory to um i think most people now would um i uh, or maybe i've made a big statement here um that there used to be a very prevalent idea of like you wait till your father comes home mm. and my mum was definitely raised with that like my her mum was not the disciplinarian mm. at all but uh, what that teaches you is that you are not the person that you need to worry about mm. you know that you are not um I mean, maybe that's a bad example because of the disciplinarian thing, but Billy Bob is not learning that he needs to have any consideration mm. for this other child. Yeah. He's learning that... If he does it, he gets told off by the adult. By the bigger person. Yeah. So actually, the only person you need to impress is... Uh, impress. Mm. The only person you need to kowtow to mm. is the adult. Mm. When actually, you need to be going, you know... I'm looking after my peers death, as death, well. Death, yeah. saying a thing. Yeah. Um, Going back to my daughter to finish that yeah. um, anecdote is that she then started school and um, she noticed a difference in the kind of ethos there and actually said to me at home, she was like, school is different to kindergarten. I said, that's right. And she said, yeah, they, um, at kindergarten we 
try and sort it out ourselves and at school they say we're not allowed to sort it out ourselves we have to come and get a grown up and she gave an example of you know mm. someone wasn't playing in the way that other children wanted to play was it Billy Bob? it was Billy Bob throwing what the water it? again in the water area um, <laughs> and I thought oh God, that's really interesting A that it's different which is maybe to be expected but B that she has picked up on it as like a mm. major thing that's worthy of comment and discussion Um but I thought, well, that's a real shame because she's obviously shown you that she's capable of doing it. But I guess if you don't have everybody on the same page, that's the other thing, isn't it? It's like I guess you're it's jumping the, between worlds and some kids are It's the fear used to of that. worst case scenario, I think, there. In that uh, if you said to a, a lot of adults and a lot of... I've said this before, but I do really feel for mealtime assistants because in general... <laughs> Again, big sweeping statement. They're the least trained in childcare in a school. You know, it's well not paid. the teachers that have been. Mm. They're the least well paid. They have the least contact time with the children. Quite often it's, mm. um, you know, grands or relatives or people that are coming in for break time in there. So they're not, you know, privy to years of educational training and mm. encouraged to look into play working and all this stuff. And if you said to them, do you want the children to sort it out? Mm. The the jump to is the worst case scenario of two kids mm. twatting each other in the face and yeah. going, We're sorting it out ourselves, yeah, miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bang yeah. and you know. And and actually that isn't the case. Mm. You know, because that's a whole separate thing where you go, right, we can't hurt each other, yeah. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. But you know, and I, I think that's part of it. And I do you know, I said before that um in the last podcast we were saying that um People are people who do forest school are in a privileged position where we're in schools, as, and for the most part, outside of the curriculum. Mm-hmm. I know that some people have to count out to the curriculum. That's a whole different thing. But for the most part, we're outside of the curriculum, but we're in schools, and our job is, our our, our mandate is, we're going to assess what these children need, and we're going to mm. put that forwards. And quite often, people I think are embarrassed to say to say that actually what these children need is not to be able to name the six trees that are in our nature area it's to be able to talk to each other in a way that's civil or they need to be able to work something out when there's only one wheelbarrow and Mm. six kids and you know we should we should have a little bit more um pride in the social emotional learning that we're doing and the teaching that we're doing and, and being able to go don't, not just going, um, well, uh, little Sally has made progress because now she can recite the tri- fire triangle, mm. she can uh, name things, and she can line up nicely at the gate. You, you want to go, Billy Bob was a prick when he turned up. Mm. And you may, maybe don't write this in his report. Yeah. but And you go, now he at least sometimes asks children if he can join in the game. Mm. That's huge progress. But that shift in perspective is so massive for so many educational practitioners. Oh, yeah. If you're only huge. doing forest school all the time, then that is completely obvious to you. But Wait, if you are. Who does other things? Huh, if you are a teacher who has to teach their class, um, the national curriculum, um, 95% of the time, and mm-hmm. then you take them outside for a couple of hours a week, um, or you are somebody who does, is employed for forest school, but you also end up doing loads of cover in the classroom. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, most practitioners um or for anyone who's observing a forest school session so Mm -hmm. there's lots of chat on support groups about that about like oh i've been observed and this is what they've told me but i've been observed by my boss who's nothing to do with forest school they are like (coughs) deputy head of the primary school or whatever um it is so difficult to see it's almost um to us it's so obvious and that is kind of the point and it's about children's well-being Mm -hmm. and all of those social and emotional aspects which are the key to being a happy and Mm-hmm. well-functioning human being um uh and there it's almost invisible it's mm-hmm. like invisible learning that you can't and even when even when people do see it they're like oh how are you going to evidence that how are you going to evidence the social and emotional progression and the and the well-being hanging well, my head you, you just can't just. actually it's about and again it goes back to kind of trusting the practitioner and if there wasn't such a thing as Ofsted and there was just general trust and belief that practitioners want the best for children Mm. in terms of and as far as i'm concerned like they are talking that ofsted's going to put more kind of uh, well-being and well-rounded business into their inspections oh good let's dictate more stuff but um you know that is i mean that is the overall point of 
of any kind of childcare slash education is the is the happiness and well being and you know social functioning of yeah. the child because all the rest of it is extra in my opinion. And and if I can tie it back, you know, back round in a in a sort of circle, because um, we've waffled quite a bit, mm. but I think there's a lot to be said for the um, the impact that one area can have on another. So if we're talking about ZPD and, and, and doing what's challenging, and we're saying that, you know, like we were saying at the start, when stuff's, when you're burnt out, mm. you, you go back to this. And um, because, we're, because we're not putting as much emphasis, I know it's only we, because we, we do, but because in general, not as much emphasis is put on social and emotional learning, mm. The break and lunch times can be the most taxing part mm. of the day for children. Yeah. So, if you if you if you kind of wear that hat for a minute, put those goggles on, and go right. They've just been outside for a twenty minute break in the middle of the morning, and they have just been in the most intense social emotional free for all mm. that they are going to be in, you know, all morning. Yeah. And then you sit back down and in, and immediately expect them to have. Uh, to have like a refreshed mental attitude mm. and that they will suddenly be ready for maths after break as if their brain and all the glucose has not just been completely burnt out on negotiating that space and the football hit me and mm. Sally wasn't very nice to me and I don't know how to play that game anymore mm. and you know and, and kind of weighing that in as of like okay well what's challenging for you now if, if you want break times to not be challenging you have to give the children the skills for break times time. to not be challenging. And the time as well. If you if you viewed social and emotional learning as as on a par with maths, yeah. then you would observe lunchtime and playtime mm-hmm. and you would go, Oh my gosh, they that can't is, do it. That kid is failing lunchtime. They He's can't going to do remedial it. lunch. They can't play. Yeah. So you would go, right, I'm gonna scrap everything else and we're just gonna concentrate on that until Fuck Egyptians. because Let's go and do exactly. This. Um and you would shift your whole perspective, but because it isn't valued and it's not, and it's not seen because you're in the staff room, um, mm. you know, well, maybe you are on duty, but you're on duty once a week or whatever and you go, oh my gosh, this is just too big a problem for me to deal with because I don't have the freedom to say, okay, we need to put more play in yeah. for these like eight and nine year olds. Um, and it's yeah. a big, it's a big ask in terms of, um, again, you know, we always talk about this with schooling, but you are such a small fraction of a child's mm. you know life experience that if you you know you can't i mean some t- uh, montessori as i understand it has lessons in how to interrupt adults that are talking how to mm. introduce yourself to whatever but you know you you could do that but then children are going to go home and there's a whole different home experience mm. in one way or another but um i think that's kind of one of the things thinking about ZPDs is you go off it sounds very accusatory now doesn't it one goes off and has a uh, 45 minute lunch break as a teacher which obviously you get completely if uninterrupted lucky, if you're lucky right I worked in a primary minutes. school I used to leave the, I used to leave the school site to maintain it so I was like you don't have to be on site during lunch time if I'm yeah. not on duty I'm leaving if you work in an academy you do have to be on site lots of academies and you have to be available to the children at all times it's actually part yeah. of your contract <clears throat> anyway um but you as an adult have had a break and a chance to mentally recharge mm. and arrive back in the classroom. You have, re- you know, re- renewed some glucose mm. and put some caffeine in in one way or another and, and they're going, right, I'm up for a challenging ZPD this afternoon. And the mm. children arrive and going, right, we're fucked from lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> we are burnt oh, we all, out. We all know this because if you worked in a classroom, you know those days, especially windy days. Yeah. You know the kind of like post-lunch. You you were talking about your um, putting on classical music because I asked you the other day if you ever oh, yeah. put music on the classroom and you were like, Social yeah, but only, yeah, only in a manipulating way. Yeah, put yeah. Some classical music you just put on, on Eric Satie's yeah. Gymnopodies. It goes, boom, bum, boom, bum. And I used to put it on, and I wouldn't mention it, and I would just have it on mm. as a like subtle cue, mm. or and as I think of it, it's a bit more like when they used to play Britney Spears and the Teletubbies to uh, get people out of what was it? Was it Benghazi? They played really loud music so they could so the um, soldiers couldn't sleep in mm. in the town. Horrible. It's more like that, you know. I'm socially manipulating the kids. I used to do uh, <laughs> yeah, like yoga, breathing, and meditation. In my but that's a, but that's school. more hands on. It's like, yeah, Miss, my, brilliant. My intention <laughs> was to be like, this. 
Okay, the music is on in the background. I don't have to say... <laughs> This is a whole other topic, but I firmly believe that no one has ever calmed down from being asked to calm down. Mm. It's the most infuriating thing. But putting some music on in the background, not mentioning and being like, there is a slow BPM, your heart rate will lower. Yeah. There is a soft tone, whatever. Um, so I think we kind of talked around in a circle there about challenges and perseverance and finding things difficult. And I hope, actually, this is, I mean, I hope that we always have an impact, but I do hope that people go and reflect back on what is challenging for children mm. not just in terms of and for you I, I'm really interested in it for an adult perspective I think it's if anyone has a, an example of um, you know experiencing ZPD personally either just in your own life or when you're a big practitioner like for example when I was splitting the wood this morning and oh, I suddenly went do you know what I could do this so you showed me a new method of using the extra split wood mm. um, probably about four weeks ago now mm-hmm. And I did do it. I'm still not on a... Yeah. But, you know, I got the hang of it. But today, I tried it. I was just like, no. The universe is telling me to stop now. Uh, and there's a difference between perseverance and, like, getting that message from the universe about, like, nah, I'm not going to do it. I am going to walk away. And I will try again. But today, it's not for me. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I'll stand next to you and I'll go, you got this, mate? Yeah, which is what you put, did. Put, yeah, I did come, yeah. yeah, I did. Um, yeah, so if you've got any, like interesting little do you know what though I just anecdotes. when you said uh, I'm interested in ZPD mm. ZPD ZPD mm. Z. 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 as um, as an adult <laughs> in my head yeah. uh, do you ever have that thing where you like maybe it's a primary school thing but you laminated the pictures of the children's faces and you put them like above their pegs or yeah. on their plant pots or whatever and I immediately plotted a class in terms of like these children are easy to deal with these children are challenging and I enjoy teaching them because it's a bit of a challenge yeah. These children are well out of my ZPD <laughs> and I cannot do it. But you don't get to walk away from it. It's, yeah. that, it's that emotional thing, isn't it, of going, mm. you can't just go, ah, he's too... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you can to a point, but you, yeah. you know, it'd be, it'd be interesting to uh, go to a, yeah. a management meeting and just go, yeah. mm, I really feel that Billy Bob is outside of my ZPD as a teacher. <laughs> so... That's really good. Could you move? <laughs> no, or just help me, or help, or help me. Or help me, yeah, help, help me, me, help me, help me. Please, help me. Help me. <laughs> If you're in the UK and you want to come down to Children of the Forest in person and do a little bit of training with us, we've got a load of dates on all the way through this next academic year. If you go to our Facebook page or our website, you'll be able to see all the dates and the titles of the courses and make sure you've got your ticket as soon as possible. They're all small groups so that we can do as much personalised learning as possible. In March, we've got a course on storytelling, music and drama. In April, a course in general outdoor learning involving a level one in forest school qualification. In May, we've got an outdoor cooking course. And in June, we've got an introduction to whittling. And if you feel like going for the big fish and you want to start your own forest school or become a qualified leader, in April this year, we're starting our level three training courses. So you can come down to Children's Forest for a whole week and spend some time with me and Gemma and learn how to run our very own forest school. So to find out all the dates and to get booked into those courses, go either to our Facebook page or to our website, which is childrenoftheforest.com.